It's no secret that Netflix is a big spender. In 2017 alone, the streaming service dropped $6.3 billion on original and acquired programming, demolishing the video content budgets of Viacom, Amazon, CBS, Apple, and Facebook. But the lion's share of Netflix's budget, of course, goes to original programming. And to do that, the company has signed off on some seriously extravagant series. But which are the most expensive shows Netflix has ever produced? We've got your numbers. Hemlock Grove American creature killer series Hemlock Grove was supposed to be a surefire hit for Netflix, but it ended up being little more than an average show with a hefty price tag. Is there something you want to tell me? I'm about to do things I don't want to. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to give in. When it premiered in 2013, Hemlock Grove ranked among Netflix's most expensive shows to date, reportedly costing $40 million for season one's 13 episodes, far more than most major television networks are willing to shell out for even a 22-episode run. Entire bloodlines are about to become extinct. The series received a less than stellar critical reception, though it did manage to garner a dedicated fan base which ultimately kept the show alive for two additional seasons before Netflix pulled the plug. Orange is the New Black As one of Netflix's most well-known and widely acclaimed series, it's not surprising that Orange is the New Black ranks among the most expensive offerings on the platform. He's a complicated lady in a complicated place. According to Peter Michelli, former co-head of TV at CAA, the show runs just under $4 million per episode. But investing in the screen rights to Piper Kerman's memoir of the same name has paid massive dividends for Netflix in awards and worldwide brand recognition. I'm gonna be super famous! <laughs> Don't forget to smile. House of Cards at the time of its creation, political thriller House of Cards set a new standard for Netflix, for quality as well as production costs. Former star and executive producer Kevin Spacey once said the production reportedly spent $100 million on the first season alone. We don't submit to terror. We make the terror. As the show closes in on its sixth and final season, Sans Spacey, in late 2018, the series will go down as a hit for the platform. Netflix reportedly upped their subscriber count by at least 27.5 million when House of Cards debuted in 2013, with the ultra-popular political drama playing a major role in the streaming service winning their fans' vote. We're just getting started. Seinfeld's Comedy Netflix isn't just shelling out for high-profile original series, it's also forking it over for original stand-up as well. And no deal was more expensive than the one they made with Jerry Seinfeld. Would I have been funnier if I grew up in Peoria in a whorehouse raised by prostitutes? Absolutely. But this is what I had to work with. Netflix reportedly paid Seinfeld a staggering $100 million for a pair of stand-up specials, bundled with the streaming rights to his hit web series Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. But the platform was happy to pay Seinfeld's lofty premium. Netflix's chief content officer, Ted Sarandos, told Deadline, Jerry is known the world over as both a great TV innovator and beloved comic voice. We are incredibly proud to welcome him to the Netflix comedy family. You excited? I wouldn't say I'm excited, but I'm looking forward to it. The Get Down Baz Luhrmann and Stephen Adley Geergis' South Bronx musical drama The Get Down caused a lot of tension between Sony Pictures Television and Netflix. According to Variety, the show's two-and-a-half-year production saw two showrunners and a whole slew of writers come and go, allegedly due to Lerman's involvement. A money-burning budget, coupled with a lack of actual filming, saw Sony get fed up quickly. But Netflix's Sarandos refused to greenlight development until Lerman agreed to direct the series from start to finish. The borough where I'm from ain't the slums. We got kings, and that's what I'll be. My friends and me. When the Get Down's 12 episode season finally wrapped, production reportedly ended up costing at least $120 million and possibly more than $190 million all in, making it one of the most expensive shows in television history. <laughs> but while it was canceled after its first season, Netflix's VP of Original Content, Cindy Holland, told Variety, we're about supporting our artists and supporting their vision. Working with Baz and his team was one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. The Crown Netflix's historical drama The Crown tells the biographical story of Queen Elizabeth II and boasts production costs that would make the real royal family tighten their corsets. What do you want, a degree? No one wants a college lecturer or a sovereign. They want a queen. The show's first season alone reportedly cost a record-setting $130 million in 2016, 
Although show creator Peter Morgan thinks that estimation is closer to the total cost for the first two seasons, that still equates to a whopping $6.5 to $13 million per hour-long episode. Helping drive up production costs was the flawless recreation of Queen Elizabeth's wedding dress, which cost approximately $37,000. We had teams of six people working for six weeks just embroidering the train and the dress. That and someone had to sign off on a life-size replica of Buckingham Palace. Altered Carbon Debuting in February 2018, dystopian cyberpunk series Altered Carbon is rumored to be one of Netflix's most expensive shows. You've been provided with this body, which came equipped with military-grade Neurochem and combat muscle memory. Based on the 2002 novel by Richard K. Morgan, Altered Carbon remained in development for nearly a decade and a half. Originally optioned by Warner Brothers, the show began its expensive march to Netflix's lineup once Terminator Genesis screenwriter Lita Caligridis and Game of Thrones director Miguel Sapochnik signed on. The exact cost of Altered Carbon's production remains a conservatively estimated $7 million per episode. However, Caligridis told THR, That number is really funny. I feel comfortable saying that that number is not correct. I would say it's inaccurate. Regardless of how off the first season's $70 million estimate may be, if this show gets its second season, it'll likely be breaking the bank as one of Netflix's most expensive shows ever. I thought you'd be bigger. They made me bring all this back up. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this other cool stuff we know you'll love too.